different, you know, different feeling uh, certainly than, uh, you know, than, than last year's opening opener in terms of uh, just your your anticipation. You know, just uh, to see the, you know, the uh, the other sports, just with the crowd and what the atmospheres are like, and just the anticipation of. Uh, I think in some way it's going to be a little bit weird, a little bit emotional, and I've, I've looked around in here. Trying to imagine just uh, this place, uh, you know, being back to, uh, you know, what atmospheres like this are, which are, you know, just electric and one of the best in college basketball. Tony Ray said that he believes you guys can be a better team than you were last year because roles are better defined. What's your take on it? Do you believe you're going to be better and why? Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I've, uh, I believe we could be better. Uh, in theory, you lose a big piece, but. You know, you, you add uh, or you return eight eight rotation guys that all played had like a really really significant role on, on a on a very successful team. Um, everyone's a year better. Um, you know, we show up with our defense, we show up with our rebounding, we show up with how hard we play. Balanced scoring attack. We've got inside uh, inside strength. We can throw the ball in. Got multiple guys that can uh, that can make plays and shoot and score from the perimeter. You know, we, we have a deep team, and I've never, you know, one time in my career where I've had a season that wasn't better than the year before. So for me, I'm accustomed to, uh, you know, pretty you know, most seasons that I've ever coached as a head coach. You know, my next year's team was always better than my year before team. What was the biggest thing you kind of worked on after this from the yeah, I think identity again. You know, the two scrimmages we tried to really identify uh, the best course of action, try a lot of different rotations, and really get a sense of, uh, of, of at least the early direction. So we figured that out, and um, you know, I think we have a much better grip on on how we want to attack uh, uh, offensively and what our rotation is going to be, and I think uh, an understanding that. You know that this is all about you know UConn and winning, and uh, you know and, and and bleeding blue the whole winter. Are there any surprises? I mean, obviously you guys kind of know what rotation you're probably be going with tomorrow. Any surprises that you might not have expected at the beginning of practices? No, I I, I think things maybe ended up. Uh, I would say maybe the exception maybe one position. Pretty much played out. I think the way that we probably imagined it would. Um, so, no, nothing surprising. Land against in-state rivals. Obviously, that's a huge game for Central and Hartford when you play them. What's it like for those teams, and what what is the motivation when they come to play you? Yeah, I mean to win. I mean, you know, they they uh, they had a number of guys that played very well against us last year, and we didn't play anywhere near as, as hard or with as much force as we needed to show up. I thought we were on like some cool, you know, some cool guy, like, you know, kind of laid back and they, you know, they drove us and they beat us to balls and, you know, kind of made us look bad and in a lot of ways. And, uh, you know, and, and we, we watched the film of that and, and um, yeah, we've got that. That's not who this team is. If we, we, we've got to be dialed in uh, defensively, dialed in on the backboard. You know, we, we have to play with incredible force and intensity. You know, we, we have to absolutely uh, devastate people with our aggression. And uh, we can never play like that. We will not play well playing the cool guy act. Coach, I mentioned one of your key concerns with this team is transition defense and attacking off script. Um, how do you guys plan on improving that and addressing that going into the season? I mean, if you have problems at the defensive end and transition, then then your players are thinking about the wrong things. And then I've done it just a, a terrible job because that's like you know core tenant number one in terms of having uh, having a good season is you you cannot give up uh, transition baskets. So I think we've gotten that point across. Um, it was problematic at times in the two scrimmages. What's the second part? What's the second? Um, Play, oh, just like yeah, yeah. Just getting the ball down the court quicker. And again, you, your opponent doesn't always cooperate with that because uh, you know they may send one, maybe two guys to the offensive glass, and uh, and maybe only one of those guys maybe goes to the halfway point, and they just they're so hyper vigilant with their transition defense. So 
Um, so we might not be able to score off that initial attack all the time, but at least get into some type of flow game earlier in the clock so that it's not 12 and we're still not you know, where we want to be. I mean, we want to be you know, into some type of flow game very, very quickly, even if the other team is, is, is really, really uh, you know, sending guys back. I know, ideally, you, I mean, you have a lot of depth, obviously. Ideally, <coughs> what would you, how, much, how many guys would like to play? I know it's going to be earned, but if you could say, I'd love to get, have a nine guy rotation, 10 guy rotation, does it matter? Yeah, I think you know, we, we know we could go at least eight, right, We're, right now. And, and uh, you know, depending on what Jordan with the, uh, you know, he's dealing with the, uh, with the ankle right now. So he was obviously a shoe in, um, you know, to be in that, that, that top nine. And, and to play pretty early in that rotation, so you know, does uh, you know, the Sewell, you know, Sewell able to? You know, has he done enough in terms of you know his uh, you know his injury? Has he got enough reps for me to be comfortable with him? Um, you know, do we go with Richie or, or Samson potentially as another front court player? Uh, some of it's going to depend on, I guess, uh, you know, just how I feel when I wake up tomorrow. You mentioned Central last year. What's your report on this year's team, and what do they do well? Yeah, very similar type of team. Uh, they run some really, really good stuff. Uh, you know, Pat's an excellent coach, and um, you know they've got very, very good uh, you know perimeter guys. I think we were beat off the dribble ten or twelve times in the first half last year, four times by their center, uh, just ripping it, driving it, getting all the way to the front of the rim. So it was, uh, you know, when you when you play, you know, when, when you play, um, you know, the the NEC teams, or you play. You know, some of the Ivies or some of the, you know, the low to mid major type of programs. They're, they're quick and they're fearless. Um, and and their number of kids on their roster are like New York, Boston, you know, these guys, man. This is, uh, you know, they're, they're not going to come in here and look around and be shook. They're going to be fired up and look to try to play, uh, uh, you know, their best game. What is the uh, prognosis on Jordan? Will he be available tomorrow? And how? Yeah, he. I, I would say pro unlikely for tomorrow, and and uh, we'll know more. Uh, we, we, we we feel like it. Hopefully, we'll, we'll we'll get some good news in terms of how quickly we can get him back. But uh, ended up. Yeah. So he had the, it's Saturday. He got a little, uh, you know, Saturday the uh, you know the ankle thing flared up. So hopefully it's not a big deal. Um, you yeah, know, but it, it's. Yeah, you obviously you wanted him available because he's a big piece. You said after the blue white that you needed <clears throat> more leadership and energy out of your upperclassmen, and that uh, you also needed some the guards to step up so that they create some balance. Have you seen that in practice? Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, <clears throat> they've gotten that message. RJ in particular, as uh, you know, coach, uh, you know, a player-led team. You hear it's you know. It's a cliche coach talk, but yeah, player-led teams that hold each other accountable, but then also pick each other up. Like if you're not doing one of those two things as a player, then then you're failing as a leader miserably. Uh, and in a place like this, you know, the mantle of leadership uh, to a to a UConn guard or a UConn senior, um, the history here at this place when you're when you're handed that mantle there uh, to lead this this proud program, uh, you've got to embrace that and you've got to develop this mentality that. Uh, that, that anyone that plays or coaches here, literally, you know, you, you get you get uh, you get smashed in the face and you start bleeding. There better be blue blood coming out of your nose or your mouth, or if you get a scratch, there better be blue blood coming out, or else your mind's not in the right place. And obviously, every every team wants to win a national championship, get to the final four and whatnot. It seems like talking to you and, and the players, the, the big thing, the Big East championship, is that kind of like sort of like. What your eyes on the prize are? Yeah, right now. yeah. I think I'm. You know, I think this team. You know, you. you have enough perimeter scoring, and you know, everyone accepts their role, and um, you know, the, has the right mentality. You know, that this team should. You know, has a has a real chance to be better than last year's team. And you know, again, our goals are very clear. You know, we want to when the when the when the calendar turns to March. You know, still be in play. Um, you know, realistically, for a regular season championship, to be playing well enough in March that uh, I feel like we have as good a chance as anyone to win the Big East tournament. I mean, that, that's you know, come coach here or play here uh, when you're at year four and have any other type of mentality. 
So uh, that's where my head is at. Obviously, you know, we, we really lock in our preparation game to game. We never get ahead of ourselves here. And we stay present in the moment. Um, but yeah. Do you have to tell the younger, or do you tell the younger players what this place is like when there's people? They've not seen it yet. Or no. do they just find out they know? No, we have a number of guys here that haven't uh, never played in front of a crowd. I think a UConn crowd. I mean, you're really the only guy. I mean, you know, Jalen, um, Isaiah, Tyler. That may be it. I mean, every, I don't think we'll have another guy that's Andre Adama, RJ Cole. Never played a home game here with fans. Um, maybe blanking on some people and might have missed. What about a cook? Where is well, he Cook at? played in front of him. Where is he at? I mean, 18 months. It's been a long time. He yeah. looks good, but we haven't seen him a lot. Yeah. You've seen him all the time. What, what do you make of him? Yeah, I, th I think he's embracing, um, embracing what this uh, what this team needs from him. He understands at the point in his career where he's got to be like really, you know, productive and play to his identity in a very similar way to Andre, Tyrese. Like a lot of conversations in the last 10 days, two weeks about play into your identity as a player and um, you know, bring value on the court. You know, you, you want to have a bigger role. You want to you want to justify, you know, more minutes. I mean, a cook has a chance to earn starter minutes in the front court. There's 80 minutes in the front court between fours and fives. Obviously, we're going to play small with four guards sometimes, but you know, it's uh, it's a chance for him, Isaiah. Uh, potentially Adama to all play starter minutes if uh, you know if they all play well enough to, to warrant it. What, what do you see as Tyrese's role right now? I mean we need him as a you know second, third scorer, uh, as, a, as a guy that, that sets the tone in terms of our physicality and, and, and play with a ton of confidence and leading the way. You know he's a you know, second team I guess not that these teams mean anything. We need him to play all Big East Conference basketball. We need RJ to play all conference level basketball. We need Adama to play all conference level basketball. And then we, we need quality from everybody else. Um, to when you say second or third leading scorer, are you assuming that Adama will be the one guy who really consistently leads you? I think he'll always be there. I think he's so good and um, he's going to get a lot of attention. And, We've worked a lot on, on trying to get him to see things when he when he when he gets trapped or when when, a lot, when the lot, when the bodies start showing up. So yeah, Adama, um, I think we I've seen enough to know he's he's a special guy. Will you wear a tie tomorrow night or will you go casual? We actually don't know. So I, that's I, a big decision. I mean, it is a not big for decision. a guy like me. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> maybe for some of these other coaches that obviously you know spend a lot more money on clothes. So, but most coaches are going casual now. Not many I don't guys care. are wearing ties yeah, anymore. I, I don't care what most coaches are doing. <laughs> I, I didn't come up through. Uh, I, I, you know, it, it's. We'll make a decision tonight. I, I'm more worried about our defense. <laughs> I'm more worried about what we're doing on offense and rebounding. To be honest with you, it's a nice red I don't give a shirt. shit. What's well, a nice red shirt? Yeah, I mean, we'll wear a t-shirt. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't I'll think about it when I'm driving home. I'll call Kamani and see if he wants. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a basketball <laughs> coach, man. <laughs> it's like crazy. Turn it over to Kamani. Yeah. He's the most 